This is Mrs. O'Neill for Chapter 11, Section 1, Chemical Reactions. Repeat after me your vocabulary words. Activity, series, balanced equation, catalyst, chemical equation, coefficients, combination reaction, combustion reaction, decomposition reaction, double replacement reaction, single replacement reaction, and skeleton equation. So you should watch the rest of this video and write down those notes and then define those terms either by looking in the chapter, uh, which I strongly suggest, or the glossary in the back of your book. And of course, that vocab quiz might be coming in the future, matching as usual. So section one deals with describing chemical reactions. So we really want to take the time to understand the parts of a chemical reaction or a chemical equation or a chemical change. You're gonna kind of hear those words interchangeably, haha. Uh -huh. um, so anyways, uh, so, so you gotta understand what the reaction or equation is and the parts of it before we can even dive into balancing them. So in this particular section, you're going to be able to label the chemical equation with all its parts. You're going to describe how to write a word equation and the steps for writing and balancing a chemical equation. So you should have watched that intro information on Beginner's Guide to Balancing Equations. Here are my notes. So he talked about the Hindenburg reaction and it's really a combustion reaction. So you also want to look at an equation. So this is the Hindenburg reaction because if we add oxygen to anything, that's really a combustion or a burning reaction. We want to remember he told us that we never can change the subscripts of our formula. So if we looked at H2O, that's always going to be water. But if you put H2O2, that would be hydrogen peroxide. So you can never change the formula of that substance. You can only change coefficients. And what I liked, what he did is he also showed you the molecular models of them. What does it really look like on the inside? What do those substances look, whether they're elements or compounds? Then he did, again, a methane reaction, not only showed you the reaction in formula way, which that's how you're going to see it all the time. He also did it on the molecular way, that visual, which is really, really nice. And then he balanced it. So did you practice with him? He did four more reactions. And if you didn't practice with him, you might want to pause and try practicing doing what he did, his steps. All right, so maybe you did it either with him or you paused and did it now, but here are those answers. And so that's what this section is going to be all about, putting the um, coefficients, those big numbers, coefficients uh, in front of substances in order to say that the left side equals the right side. So off to your notes packet. On May 6, 1937, the huge airship Hindenburg was headed for its landing site in Lankhurst, New Jersey, after an uneventful transatlantic crossing. So here's this blimp, as you would maybe call it, and across the Atlantic Ocean, now is in New Jersey, and uh-oh, suddenly, to the horror of observers on the ground, the airship erupted into a fireball. Within a short time, 210,000 cubic meters of the airship's lifting gas, hydrogen, had burned and the airship was destroyed. The chemical reaction that occurred can be described as hydrogen combines with oxygen to produce water. In this section, you will learn to represent this chemical reaction by a chemical equation. And that's kind of why I say chemical reaction and chemical equation. I use uh, quite frequently. But anyways, anything that is combining with oxygen is really a burning or a combustion reaction. So pause the video, read as you write, fill in those blanks, and then play to hear my words. So a substance, I'm always going to refer to everything that you see in a chemical equation is considered a substance. Well, that substance can be an element or it can be a compound. And this is gonna be really important to understand, especially when we get later on in this chapter when we have to, to give types of reactions. So if we can identify those substances in our equation as an element or a compound, it's gonna help us understand the type of chemical equation it is. 
So just listen to this first and then pause and fill in later. So if I think about an element, what would that look like? Well, it should look like or come to your mind one capital letter. Wait, we've said that all the time. Looking at that periodic table, those are all symbols of elements because they all have one capital letter. And if they have a second letter like sodium, then that letter is lower cased. And we want to remember in this case, even our chlorine and our hydrogen, even though they're considered diatomic molecules, we're going to consider them those elements, those, those, those special elements um, for this chapter. So then what does a compound look like? Hmm, two or more of those capital letters, right? So when we have two or more elements that are bonded together to make a compound, then we will uh, have a compound. So again, we need to be able to identify elements and uh, identify those compounds. So pause the video and fill in your notes. So remember those seven diatomic molecules, I always remember as Cliff H. Braun, and you can also remember that on your periodic table, nitrogen to fluorine to iodine makes a seven, and of course, hydrogen is your odd man out. So a chemical reaction is just that process in which one or more substances changes into new substances. So it can be elements to compounds, it could be compounds to compounds, it could be compounds to elements, and it could be a variety of different elements and compounds. But to figure out the type is what we're going to learn later on. And we want to remember again that that chemical reaction is also a chemical change. And now our chemical equation is, oh, sorry, our chemical equation is how we're going to uh, visualize that reaction changing. So these are the different evidences of a chemical reaction or a chemical change, and we've seen most of these uh, prior in our course so far. Uh, but there's two things that you can see with the formation of a gas, and that would be you could see bubbles or smoke. So these are just evidences of that chemical change, again, which is going to be important in this chapter when we're dealing with reactions. There it is. There's our chemical equation I was talking about. This just shows us our formulas and our symbols of our reactants, which what we start with, and our products, which we end with. So an equation is just going to show us using those symbols, just like Bozeman Science. He actually showed us with, um, I know I call him Mr. Bozeman, but it's Mr. Anderson. Uh, he showed us visually with uh, the symbols of those elements and compounds, but he also showed us those on the molecular level, what does those molecules and atoms really look like. So the reactants is what the substances before the reaction takes place, they're going to be to the left of that yield sign. Products are going to be those things after the reaction takes place. And again, they're going to be to the right or to the right of the arrow, right of that yield sign. I always say you have to make a product, right? You're probably using paper or you're using a pencil or a pen, right? Those are all products. You might be sitting on a chair. Those are all products that are made from the reactants that they came from. So I always remember products are at the end. They're going to be to the right of that yield sign or arrow. So this is how the overall reaction looks like. Reactants yields products. So we just want to remember R to P. So those coefficients are what we're going to use to balance the reaction. Those are going to be the only numbers that we can change. And in the next part of this chapter, you're going to learn the difference of those subscripts versus coefficients and how they play a part on those elements in those substances. So those are the only numbers we can put in front of the whole entire formula of our substance in order to balance the reaction. And these are going to be different symbols that you're going to see in a chemical equation. So the biggest one you always see is the yield. Now the G, L, and S, what phase they are in, sometimes you see them and sometimes you don't. At this stage of the game, they're not that important, but you still might see them in your practice problems or in your book work problems. Uh, so I want to make sure that, again, they're not playing a part in the balancing of the reaction. They're just there to tell you what type 
of substance it is. Now, AQ might be something new that you've never seen before, and that's aqueous. And that just means I've taken that solid material, usually it's a solid, and I dissolved it into water. So I've actually made a solution. All right, so AQ means aqueous, and all that means is I've taken that substance, put it into water, and actually made a solution like salt water, right? You put salt into water, it dissolves, and now I've made a solution. Well, that's called aqueous because that salt is no longer in solid phase and it's not a liquid phase. It is now dissolved and now I have a solution form. So that's a totally different way of presenting that substance. All right, so again, I would wait to pause the video until I'm done with everything here. Um, so just to give you a heads up, all we're going to do is kind of talk about the parts of a chemical reaction, all of those terminologies that you just heard, and uh, label a chemical reaction. So here we go. So if I ask you to label each substance, now I see four substances, one, two, three, four. Can you look at them and, and decide are those elements or compounds? Hopefully you can say that's an element, that's a compound, that's a compound, and that's an element. Hopefully that makes sense. My next question is, what are these two substances that are to the left of the reaction? Well, those would be considered reactants. Hmm. And how about those two on the right side? Those would be considered products. So again, I always like to remember R to P, and I also like to remember um, that the products are what you form at the end, right? You're always buying products. You're buying something that somebody made from multiple parts, usually. Uh, where are those coefficients? Well, I'm going to kind of put a diamond around them. And since there's four substances, ladies and gentlemen, that means there are four coefficients. Those are those numbers that were put there to balance the equation. And yes, just like a subscript of one, you have a coefficient of that understood one. So if I asked what coefficient number is in front of this gallium sulfate, you would have to tell me one. It's just understood. Just like gallium here. You have one gallium, but you don't see a subscript there. And that arrow really means yields. So a lot of times we'll say reactants yields products, or we'll say reactants forming products. So again, there's different ways of talking about that arrow. And what does that S mean? Sorry about that. That S is going to say that it's in solid phase. The AQ means that it's aqueous. Remember, that means it's a solution. Um, and the G means that it's a gas phase. Um, are there any diatomic molecules in our equation? Absolutely. That would be the hydrogen gas. And are there any acids? Yes. Anything that begins with an H is an acid. So in this case, it's um, sulfuric acid would be there. So at this point, I would pause and somehow either color coordinate it like I did, or um, you can do it any way you want. Maybe different highlighters, just be light on the highlighting because of the, uh, the notes packet would be, you know, back and forth. Um, so just pause the video and make sure to get that information on how to label those parts of a chemical reaction. All right, hopefully you labeled, hopefully all of that makes sense. Uh, now that you've learned that terminology, hopefully you can um, understand the parts of a chemical reaction. All right, guys, we will see you in class.